Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 9th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a couple of stories related to security tools to start out with. First, John posted about how he found various cookie databases that appear to originate from browsers in VirusTotal. VirusTotal as a paid service offers subscribers to search through all submitted files, even those that do not lead to any hits when inspected by VirusTotal's malware scanners. John, for example, has some Yara rules that he's using to search for domain names that he owns to see if they show up in any malware. And of course, malware that wouldn't be detected by standard antivirus engines would be particularly interesting here. These files are often of specific interests to researchers as a result now, but some security tools submit all unknown files they encounter to VirusTotal for inspection. As a result, confidential data often then ends up in VirusTotal like these cookie files and then can be downloaded by anybody with a paid VirusTotal subscription. So be careful when submitting data to sites like VirusTotal. Often, all you really have to do is submit a hash of the file and then of course, you don't reveal the content of the file. There are also, for example, email gateways that submit all attachments to VirusTotal. Particularly often homemade solutions do that. Don't do it, you're really exposing all of your confidential data that way. Secondly, Xavier reminds us that security tools often run with elevated privileges and if compromised, these privileges can be leveraged by an attacker to further compromise a network. For example, vulnerability scanners often have logging credentials to various systems. Sometimes these credentials are even privileged or elevated accounts, uh, so they can do their vulnerability scanning on a particular system. And then of course, firewalls include rules that allow vulnerability scanners to reach systems across different network segments, which uh, can be leveraged by an attacker. Xavier posted a couple more examples, and of course we have seen this sometimes actually being exploited in the wild. British police released an alert last week warning schools in the United Kingdom about a recent pretty elaborate ransomware attack. The Miss Grenville first call a school claiming to be associated with the Department of Education and then announcing that they will send some sensitive document they ask for the email address of the head teacher to send a document to. This way, of course, they not only get a very valuable target to send the email to, but by pre-announcing the email, the victim then is, of course, more likely to open it once they receive it and enable macros of whatever it takes to read that email. If the attacker is successful, uh, then they will, in this case, demand 8,000 pounds in order to unlock the system. It's, of course, very likely that these attacks uh, will be used against other businesses as well, just as uh, they do with the British schools. They probably just have to come up with the right pretense uh, to use in their phone call. And well, uh, while this is sort of the latest greatest when it comes to ransomware, also some old attacks, I guess, are just not going away. In the past, uh, we have seen a number of attacks that essentially just locked up the system more or less. For example, they opened many, many different browser windows and then popped up a message asking the victim to call some tech support line that would charge them a lot of money to essentially get rid of uh, those pop-ups. That has been sort of been going away. I guess people figured out how to reset their systems, but the latest version of this attack doesn't just open browser windows. What it does on older versions of OS X that still allow you to do that is it opens draft emails and then essentially floods the user with these email windows. Same idea, the draft email, of course, will then ask the victim to call a tech support number. Now in newer versions of OS X that no longer allow opening up the draft email, they just use iTunes. iTunes apparently can still be opened. 
So uh, that's what will then create the pop-ups. Essentially, it could use any program that can be opened with JavaScript and it can display a custom message. If you happen to come across one of these sites with a browser that's vulnerable to neither one of uh, those two issues, then they'll just do the old trick with the JavaScript pop-ups and hope you'll still fall for that. Probably still enough victims left that will uh, go for this. It looks like the domains that were affected by this are now shut down, but of course they'll just uh, move to something else. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. If I missed a story that you think I should have covered, uh, let me know. And uh, I'll add wherever that story came from uh, to my sources. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.